Hey everybody, how's it going? It's Jamie the Crafty DIY Guy. Welcome to my channel. Alright you guys, I'm super excited about today's video because they incorporate wood beads. Now, the great thing about wood beads is that you can find them at places like Michael's or Hobby Lobby or whatever kind of craft store that you go to. Also, occasionally you can find unfinished wood beads or even finished wood beads in Dollar Tree in the Crafter Square section. I found actually some of those that you see back there at my local Dollar Tree. Now, if uh, you are one of my subscribers, then you've been around for a while and I want to say thank you, of course, for being here. If you're brand new to the channel or checking me out for the first time, hi, I'm Jamie, I'm the Crafty DIY Guy and I like to do all kinds of cool, fun, easy DIY projects and I also like to shop. All right, guys, let's get into those projects. <laughs> All right, everyone, and for project number one, we are going to take one of these larger Dollar Tree mirrors as well as some beads that I currently have on a string there already. I'm going to go ahead and remove all of the packaging from our mirror, and then we're going to very, very carefully take our backing off of this. This will also include your mirror. We'll set that aside for right now, and we'll come back to that. For this frame, I am going to go ahead and paint this with chalk paint. Unfortunately, it is raining outside, so I cannot use my typical spray paint that I would typically do for this. However, the chalk paint actually worked pretty well on this. Um, for this plastic frame, I do recommend doing at least three coats and definitely use your heat gun in between. I had to do that, and um, this was a little tricky painting on the plastic with the chalk paint was a little challenging, but it, it definitely is doable. After you've gone through and given your frame the desired number of coats, go ahead and just dry it really good with your heat gun or just let it dry, and then you are going to start working on your mirror. For the mirror itself, I wanted to make sure that my mirror was centered because when I took it off of the frame, it actually was not centered. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take my pen. I'm gonna write around or draw around, trace around the inner circle there. I'm gonna add a generous amount of hot glue onto this and then I am going to take my mirror and glue it right back into the center, kind of within that line that I traced on the actual frame or on that cardboard backing, I should say. After that has dried and all set up, I'm then just going to simply replace it onto the backing of my mirror, and we are going to move to the next part. After my backing was dried, I then took my beaded string and I was going to glue this to the back of my mirror. All I did was just kind of place this at like 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock. I added a generous amount of hot glue and then made sure that that string was also glued down to the back of that mirror. I simply added some tape to make sure that everything was held in place. And when it was all done, this is what it looked like. I absolutely love this. I love even the way that the chalk paint didn't quite adhere to all of the pieces of that frame itself. It gives it a really cool farmhouse look and I really am happy with this mirror. And for my next project, I'm going to take one of these hanging shelves. They come in a two-pack, and you can get these at Dollar Tree. They also come with this twine as well as a hook. I'm also going to add some beads. These are the same beads that I used for the previous project in the mirror. The first thing you've got to do is get into this sucker. This uh, plastic is not playing around. So once you finally figured out how to get into this thing, you can either do both shelves or you can do just one shelf. I'm actually just doing one shelf for this particular project. Now, you're going to get two pieces of string. You're going to think that they shorthanded you, but what you'll actually do is just take one of these long strands, kind of bring them end to end, and then you'll go ahead and just cut this in the middle here, and then that will give you the two strings that you need for your shelf. Now, that O-ring that's in the middle there, that is totally optional. I did end up putting that on at first, and then I decided not to use it afterwards and you'll actually see why. So for this twine or this, uh, yeah, it's twine, you want to make sure that this is nice and tight. So I'm going to add some hot glue to the end of that. And the reason why I'm doing that is because it's going to harden the end. It's going to harden the tip and make it almost like threading a needle. And it's going to make threading your beads so much easier. This is a technique that I use for all of my beads. Now, 
These wooden beads came off of a garland. I've had these for quite some time. And all I'm going to do is just start threading each one of my strings until they are completely covered in beads. Now, I went ahead and I did 40 beads per strand. So after I've got everything threaded and alternated through and ready to go, now it is time to go ahead and just start putting these in the shelf itself. Go ahead and take a screwdriver, make your holes a little bit bigger if you have to, and then you're gonna pull that thread through. You're gonna go ahead and tie it in a short knot kind of at the end there and uh, play around with it a little bit. It's gonna be a little tough sometimes, at least this one was for me. And then I'm going to pull my beads really, really tight onto one side, and then we're going to fill in the other side with our other strands. So um, hopefully that makes sense. I don't think I said that in order. <laughs> Go ahead and put your um, strands on either side, and then you're gonna tighten them up. There I go. Tighten them up and make sure that everything is nicely connected and very, very tight at the end. And then you're going to feed these two pieces through the O-ring itself. Now, again, I ended up taking that O-ring off and just using a piece of twine to tie my ends together. I just didn't like the way the O-ring looked, but um, you kind of can do either way. And then after you've got everything threaded through and tightened, this is what it looks like. I am in love with the shelf. I love how I took a Dollar Tree shelf and really, really elevated it to something really, really fancy. And for this next project, we are going to take four of these wooden squares I picked up at my local hobby store. Also, I have this strand of garland that is from Walmart. This is actually Christmas garland that was left over. I loved this gray and white. Now, if you don't have any beads that are already painted, you can also get beads at Dollar Tree. They have unfinished wooden beads in the crafter square section, and they look like this. You could very easily paint yours, but I didn't have to. I also, if you don't have some small wood squares, you could take a piece of trim like this and very easily cut it up for your four squares you're going to go ahead and drill a hole on either side of your wood piece now this drill bit is not going all the way through that would kind of be ideal I did not have a drill bit that was quite long enough so I went down as far as I could on each side of my wood block and I just repeated that on all four of my wood blocks now these will not go all the way through however we're going to make it look like it's gone all the way through on each one of these. So after you've gone ahead and got all four of your squares completely drilled out and ready to go, you can start painting these. I'm just going to go ahead and take some white chalk paint and I am just going to paint all four sides or all six sides, I guess, of my square here. I'm going to paint the front, I'm going to paint the sides, and then I'm going to paint the other side. So if my math is right, is that... I'm going to paint all the sides. I don't know how many they are. <laughs> I'm going to paint everything in uh, two coats of chalk paint, just making sure that everything is nice and covered. And then I'm going to take my heat gun out and make sure that everything is nice and dry before moving on to the next step. Now for my DIY, I'm not going to be using the uh, garland that is kind of intact. This is way too long. And I want these beads to be used, you know, for other projects in the future. So I'm going to go ahead and just remove all of these beads from the string. This is a pretty easy way to do this. You can do this without making any kind of a major, major mess. As you can imagine, once you cut that string, you're going to have beads everywhere. So if you just do it over a glass jar or some sort of container where you keep all of your beads, then this is a pretty foolproof way to store these when you're done and only use the ones that you need. Now, I went ahead and just did a very simple task at the end of a piece of twine. Um, I am not a great tassel maker. I'm not a great tassel maker and I'm not a great bow maker. So uh, forgive me for not showing you exactly how I'm doing this tassel. However, um, you can Google. There's a lot of really great tutorials out on YouTube. I should probably do it myself. Now I brought those two pieces of twine together and then I just added some more hot glue on the end. That way I had a kind of a nice stiff needle point. And then I'm going to start threading my beads once I figure out kind of what my color pattern is here. I've uh, not really sure exactly what I wanted to do, but I think I ended up going with a gray and then a couple white and then another gray. And you're going to feed this all the way down to the end where your tassel is. 
And then this is where you're going to kind of fool the eye or kind of do the optical illusion. Now, if you have your drill bit that's long enough, you won't have to do this part. But this is kind of the idea. You're threading this square block onto your string. However, my holes do not go all the way through. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this down about a finger's width here, and then I'm going to use my kind of needle trick, if you will, and I'm gonna add some hot glue onto the tip of my string here, and then I'm going to just wait for it to cool down for just a second, and then I'm going to kind of twist it all together, that way I have a nice point. Then I'm going to add glue into the hole, and then I'm going to take my twine and I'm just going to push it right through that glue while it's still nice and wet and just connect everything that way. Now you will repeat this process for all four of your wood blocks. And if you need a screwdriver or a skewer or something to help push that that uh, thread or that twine through, go right ahead and do that. You can definitely play around with this. And as you can see, it will eventually tighten up. And then you are going to take another piece of twine. You're going to take some beads again. You're going to thread them through again. And then you're going to repeat that same process. Now with this one that already has the kind of tip glued down, you can easily just kind of push that in through there like so, and then just keep repeating that process until you're done. And then at the other end, you're going to tie another tassel. So I just kind of wrap my uh, twine up around my fingers and I kind of do something that I think looks like a tassel and uh, tie it off at the end. And uh, again, I'm not great at tassels, but when I, you are done, it's going to look something like this. Now, you've got those four blocks that you can kind of write something on. You could use a Cricut, you could use stickers. I'm just gonna use my Arteza paint pen and I'm just going to spell out the word home just using my freehand and my Arteza paint pen. Now, these are acrylic markers. Um, I actually really do like the way that these work. Um, again, I'm not the best at freehand, but I'm gonna go ahead and just give it a try. This is something that pretty much everybody can do. As long as you're not too hard on yourself <laughs> with your handwriting, then I think that this can be a lot of different fun. There's a lot of different ways that you can kind of play around with this. And when you're all done, you've got this great looking tassel. I love the way this looks. This would be so cute on a tiered tray or a farmhouse setting. I really think that there's a lot of great options with this one. And I really love the way that this turned out. And for this last DIY, I'm going to take three of these signs that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. They were on sale for 79 cents each, so they worked out really good. If you need to repeat this or want to repeat this using Dollar Tree signs, you can very easily do this. All you have to do is find three signs that are the exact same that have that wood frame to them. Also, you're going to need some more wood beads. Imagine that. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and remove these price stickers. They actually came off pretty easily here using my heat gun, which was a refreshing change because, as you know, sometimes removing these little stickers can be quite the monster. Now, for the the initials that are on my three signs, they didn't mean anything to me. Um, I am not planning on keeping those, so I'm just going to take my Ryobi mouse sander here, and I'm just going to lightly sand off those letters on each one of my signs. Now, depending on what you're using for your actual um, sign, you may have to completely paint over it. You may be able to sand it over like I'm doing here. Either way, go ahead and just have three signs that have a flat surface of some kind. You could even use contact paper or any kind of scrapbook paper or something to cover yours up. Totally, totally up to you. Now, once I've got everything sanded and completely removed with all of the black um, kind of initial letters that were there. There's a couple little stragglers here behind. Um, I'm then going to take some white chalk paint and I'm just going to do two coats over top of this. Now, for my chalk paint, again, I'm just using my regular white chalk paint here and I am making sure that I've got at least two coats in that area that I've sanded and then I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of fill in the other areas. I did just kind of work in the middle for the most part and then I went back in towards the end there and just kind of touched up some of those spaces that uh, were not completely covered. Um, I really did like kind of that worn out uh, kind of, um, not worn out, what's that? that look that I'm trying to get that um, 
aged look. I don't know what I'm trying to say here, guys. But uh, I think you understand what I'm doing here. I am just going to freshen up all of that white area. And then we are going to do something different with these signs. Now, for my signs themselves, I'm going to take my drill with a rather large drill bit, and I am going to drill through each side of the sign, or at least on the two sides of the sign. We're going to do this so the signs are going lengthwise. You could do this vertically or horizontally. It's totally up to you. For this particular design, I'm going on either end of the longer ends there, so um, hopefully that is making sense. Once I've got my six holes drilled in my signs, I'm then going to take my twine. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of any of that dust too. And I am just going to thread this through. Now you can see I'm a bonehead here. I didn't remove any of the hardware or anything, but that's okay. Um, after I've got my twine threaded through the first sign, I'm then going to add some beads. For my particular look here, I'm gonna go with one of these darker beads and then with one of the lighter wash beads, and then I'm gonna follow it up with another dark bead. And then I'm going to take my twine and I'm going to thread it through my next sign. I'm gonna go ahead and peel off some of these beads that are on this piece of twine or this piece of garland that I've been using here. And uh, I am just going to now thread it back through the other way. Come on, Jamie, get with it. Um, did you see there? I almost added another bead. <laughs> so after you've got that pulled through, you're just going to go ahead and repeat that until you're all the way at the end. Now, once I've made it all the way through the other end, I am then going to take a tassel or take some twine and create a tassel. Again, uh, I'm not the greatest at making these tassels, but I'll just kind of show you the way that I do it. The first thing I do is wrap a generous amount of twine over my four fingers here and I kind of make sure the end is going to be kind of where I started or at least in the same general area and then I go ahead and cut this off then I take the opposite end of where those kind of two pieces that are sticking out are and uh, I am just going to then take another piece of twine and uh, kind of halfway wrap it around sort of and then I'm going to get confused and now I'm going to remember what I need to do and I'm going to tie the end of this kind of uh, O onto the end of my rope kind of like so and then once I've got a nice tight kind of area there figured out I'm then going to take a piece of twine and just wrap it around the middle and create my tassel. Once I have that first tassel done then I'm just going to go ahead and tighten up all of my strings and then I'm going to add another tassel on the other end of my three block formation here to give me something that looks like this when it's all done. Now for the customization of this, I'm actually gonna be using my cutting machine. You can do anything that you want with this. You could use paint pens, you could use stickers from Dollar Tree, you could freehand this. There's a lot of fun ways that you can really personalize this. I'm using permanent vinyl and I'm just gonna go ahead and use my transfer tape. And then I am just going to kind of trace only around the area that I want to stick to my signs. This is a little bit of a trick that I learned just through kind of trial and error. Um, transfer tape tends to peel away paint. And if you do it this way, you actually get a better hold, not only with your vinyl, but it's also better because it actually prevents your paint from peeling away. So just a just a little tip that I've learned for those of you that have a cutting machine. If you're doing this freehand, or if you are using stickers, then guess what? You don't have to deal with any of this. And when this is all done, you've got a great sign that says, bless this home. You could really do anything you want with this. I absolutely love this. You could connect multiple signs together and put family member names on it. I'm so pleased with this particular DIY. Probably one of my favorites. All right, everyone, that's it. I hope you enjoyed these projects today. Let me know what your favorites were. I think the bless this home sign is definitely my favorite of all of these for sure. Thank you guys, take care, and I look forward to bringing you more DIYs and projects very soon. <laughs>